someone who likes to rock a rocking chair in the middle. Here, now, look up. Way up. Is there a giant conspiracy around the existence of giants? Well, maybe, depending on how you want to define conspiracy and giants. While there are layers of nonsense and charlatans throughout these tales, there is also a lot of interesting possible evidence in the form of academic papers, news articles, and government archives, all detailing giants and giant skeletons. Combined with local legends of indigenous cultures all over the world, the curious commonalities seem to be more than just pure coincidence. Well, first off, how rare are extremely tall humans? Well, in the last hundred years, the tallest man was Robert Wadlow. He had a condition called gigantism, causing an excessive amount of growth hormone, and it's only one of a handful of serious conditions that can cause extreme growth, which can typically be treated with medication today. Even people over seven feet is extremely rare. Now, groups like the Maasai people of Kenya or Tanzania, well, they can average over six feet. And the Danes in Europe, well, they're amongst the tallest people in the world as well. But none are pushing anywhere near seven or eight feet. And as you wind the clock back throughout history, well, the average size of people, it just gets smaller. So then why did some of the great European explorers recount meeting a famous race of giants always in the same place for hundreds of years? and you probably own a piece of clothing with its name on it, Patagonia. When Ferdinand Magellan was circumnavigating the globe while rounding South America, Antonio Pigafetta, who was chronicling his voyages and one of the few survivors, noted that in 1520 they encountered a naked man dancing and singing on a beach, throwing dust on his head when they made contact. Pigafetta writes that they only came up to the person's waist and he was well proportioned, even pointing at the sky, thinking that's where they came from. Now the location was marked on a map afterwards. Well, this was a map made after Magellan's voyage and it's in the Library of Congress. And where they say they met the giants? Well, it shows the tall Patagon people and their enormous size. Now sailors and explorers for centuries spoke of meeting giants in this region, especially around Terra del Fuego, where the chaplain for the explorer Francis Drake wrote about meeting giants in 1579, and they were over seven and a half feet tall. Just over a decade later, William Adam, the first Englishman en route to reach Imperial Japan, well, he wrote about his ship's crew having a violent encounter with exceptionally large people in the same area. And so the stories continued for hundreds of years of giant people in this part of the world. But besides the stories, is there any evidence? Well, maybe. This is a photo in the Library of Congress taken at the end of the 19th century by an expedition en route to Antarctica. Dubbed Ona Man, he stands over seven feet tall with only a fur draped over his shoulder and nothing else. He is part of the present-day Tewelche people who live in the Patagonia region, and just as Magellan first described, is not wearing any clothes. Now there is no more context for this photo, and there's no wiki page for it as well. So unless you're looking for it in the Library of Congress, you wouldn't know it's there. In places like Peru, reports of giant skeletons being unearthed has been commonplace, going back to the days of conquistadors slashing their way through the New World in search of treasure. More recent reports of large bones found in Ecuador in the last 10 years being sent to Germany for study may be a hoax, because all news reports about it are based off a single source, and the experts mentioned but they don't exist online, anywhere, and the findings have never been mentioned again, which is commonplace with a lot of tales about giants. Just repeat the same story enough times and it eventually becomes the truth, whether it's factual or not, which lends credence to the simple argument, where are all the bones today? In the digital age, giant skeletons is content gold, but the stories and legends persist, as do the ancient photos, although they're all more than a century old. Now, indigenous tribes around the Amazon in places like Ecuador, Brazil, and Peru, well, they've long spoke about a friendly race of giants who lived in the mountains. As a curious side note, this is Father Crespi, an Italian monk who moved to Ecuador in the early 1920s. After gaining the trust of local indigenous tribes, they gave him hundreds, possibly thousands of gifts and ancient artifacts, including very large ones like this crown, while well, most of Father Crespi's collection either burned in a fire or vanished right after his death. He held many pieces in his collection of an unusual size. 
And this is just one of many reports of very large ancient artifacts that have been found all over the world of a disproportionate size. And the tale of giants? Well, they reach all around the world. That'll be coming up in another video, so stay tuned. Well, look up. Look way up. You can remember, I'm a giant. A friendly one, but a big one. I'm Sean. If you like the content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. There is great new material coming all the time. Leave your comments below. I want to know what you think. What's your opinion on the tales of giants? Stay tuned. There's another great video coming up next.